Hello again. Chapter 14 of My Teacher Funk the Planet by Bruce Cobble. Um, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, please go watch those. That's all I had to say. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. That's all I got to say. Chapter 14 is called Jealousy. Why? Let's see. I took a moment to recover, then stepped closer. The woman leading the discussion group looked very familiar. She should have. I had spent the better part of a year in her classroom. It was Miss Marie Schwartz, our sixth grade teacher, the one Brock's home had locked in a force field in his attic. The man who was even the man was even more familiar. He was my father. What's he doing here? I whispered. Oh, what's he doing here? Why don't I ask him and find out, replied Hulain quietly. That made me angry. If you want me to start asking direct questions, let's begin with you. Why did you bring me here? Hulain shrugged. I thought you might learn something. Maybe I don't want to learn this. I, I hissed. He shrugged again and said, I'm your teacher. I'd rather have a math lesson, not your choice. Duncan leaned toward me. They're dating, he whispered. What? Everyone turned to look at us. I started to blush, though I'm not sure whether that, that it actually showed that. I started to blush, though I'm not sure whether that actually showed through my mask. Duncan gestured to the group that every, everything was all right. They returned to their discussion. Your father is going out with Miss Schwartz, he whispered. I didn't answer. I couldn't think of anything to say. Come on, let's go to my room, said Duncan after a few moments of silence. I nodded, since that, since that made as much sense as anything at that moment. Duncan led us to a shabby corridor that had that had many doors opening off either side. The fifth door on the left opened to a room with, a three, with three bunk beds and three battered looking dresses. Dressers. Duncan climbed onto one of the top bunks. Come up, he said, motioning to who landed me. We climbed the ladder and joined him. Remember to go invisible if anyone comes in, Duncan said to who landed as we were settled, settling in. Of course. Girls aren't supposed to hang out in the boys' room. rooms, Duncan explained to me as who landed slept the pillow. I had so many questions bouncing around in my brain that I didn't know where to start. Finally, I decided to try from the beginning. When did you come out of your coma? I asked Hulan. Shortly before you left the ship. Remember when you fainted in the council chamber? How could I forget? Well, that was caused. Well, what caused it was our minds brushing as I started to come around. I was still fairly groggy, delirious actually, but I knew I was going to be all right. Though I didn't want the council to know it yet. That's why I gave you the signal when you came to visit me. So you wouldn't have to worry about me. Signal? Hulan looked surprised. Didn't you understand? Before he could finish, I slapped my forehead as something that had been snagging in the back of my mind for weeks suddenly became clear. You winked at me! I cried, remembering how he had slowly opened and closed one eye when I was standing in his room on the New, New Jersey. My pleasure at figuring that out was modified, modified by another question. So has this all just, so has this all been just a big joke to you? I asked, trying to decide whether I was angry. Jokes can be very serious, said Hulan, sounding dead serious himself. On the other hand, most serious things are terribly funny when you look at them from the right angle. Could we skip the philosophy and go straight to the information? He shrugged. I was playing possum, to use an earth phrase. Reasons, number one, I did not want to be included in your mission. Number two. I did not want my enemies to know I was still in the game. Later, when I was more fully recovered, I woke up long enough to cause some excitement. This gave me a chance to ask a friend to help me with a bit of a de with a bit of deception. I appeared to drift in and out of my coma several times over the next few days, which gave me a chance to make a switch. He smiled. There was still something in that bubble back in the ship, and it is pretty comatose. I'm going to pretend I know what that word is, how to pronounce it, and what it means. It's C-O-M-A-T-O-S-E. If you know, congrats. Fortunately, it only looked like me. I frowned. Wouldn't technology, wouldn't technology as sophisticated as what you have on the New Jersey immediately detect that you had put something in your place? As technology advances, the technology to fool it advances too. There's a nice balance in that, don't you think? I nodded, thinking many other things as well. So when did you come down here? When I heard that Duncan had been taken captive by the, your police force. To my surprise, I felt jealous. Hulan was my teacher, 
and I didn't like the idea that he had spent his time this time with Duncan. Why didn't you join us? I asked. I was still not ready to let it be known that I wasn't up and about, said Hulan. I certainly didn't want to have to work out every step of what I did with Cleveland and Brock's home. Even less did even less did I want it's Julie. Remember Julie? But like Herba give a little bit to Julie breathing down my neck. The two of us have never gotten along very well. What did you want to do what did you want to do that you couldn't do it in front of them? I've been doing telepathy experiments with Duncan. Are you trying to kill yourself? I cried. What I didn't ask, partly because I was afraid of the answer, was whether he had made contact with Duncan's brain and survived. I still feared there was something about my brain in particular that had driven him into his coma. Peace, said Hulan, holding up his hands. I didn't take any unnecessary chances. It wasn't easy, but I restrained myself. No machines this time. Duncan spoke up. As part of the experiments, Hulan has been helping me learn how to use my brain, teaching me ways to focus my mind on to focus my mind and clear my thoughts. That was a relief since it's so powerful right now, it was driving me crazy. He smiled, a brave, sad smile. I think I may be able to cope all right when the brain fry starts to fade. That's good, I said, realizing that Duncan really did seem different, more calm somehow. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you, he said. Would you like a poot? What? Do you want a poot? I can make you one. It turns out they don't mind being split. You just have to give them plenty of salt and water and let them rest for a bit afterward. I've been making new ones for the kids in the shelter. You're kidding, I cried. Turning to Hulan, I asked, won't that cause all kinds of problems? Possibly, said Hulan. Maybe it was a bad idea. Duncan shrugged. I did ask the other kids to keep them a secret. I couldn't believe how calmly the two of them were taking this. I was sure Cleveland wouldn't take it that way. In fact, I had a feeling she would be furious. How did you end up in this place, I asked. I wanted to observe your old teacher for a while, replied Hulan. I checked around and learned she was working here, so we came here too. Finding your father was an unexpected bonus. In your opinion, as you will, said Hulan calmly. Duncan went to one of the dressers and pulled out a plastic container. Inside was his poot. I wondered how many copies of the thing he had passed out already. Then I wondered if the kids he had given them to were splitting their poots as well. How long do they have to rest between... Uh, splittings. About half a day, if you don't keep them in the refrigerator like Creedbloom did, said Duncan. Half a day? I did a little mental arithmetic. Divide a poot at noon, and you have two poots. Divide both of those at midnight, and you have four. If you split them all again at noon and midnight the next day, you're up to 16. And at the end of the next day, you would have 64. At the end of the fifth day, you would have more than a thousand poots. In less than 10 days, you could have more than a hundred thousand of those things. I looked around nervously, half expecting to see poots hanging from the ceiling, climbing out of the dressers and oozing out under the door. Poots are very important, said Hulan happily. Poot, said the poot as Duncan squeezed it. I blacked out and fell off the bed. <laughs> That's the end of chapter 14. Chapter 15, coming in hot. Stay tuned. Hold on to your chairs. I don't know what I was going for there. See you in the next one.